My name is Lee Moore, and this is the Chinese Literature Podcast. Today, we are going to start the first of a two-part mini-series on screws in modern Chinese literature. I know what you're thinking. The screw? Yes, that little humble tool with its own aisle at the hardware store. That very thing. Though it's largely ignored, it holds our society together. Our world would literally collapse without the screw, and we ignore it at our peril. For this mini-series, again, it's only going to be two parts, I'm going to look at two very different takes on the screw in Chinese literature. Today, I'm going to look at a passage in Lei Feng's diary, and then next week I'm going to look at a more contemporary piece of, of modern Chinese poetry that gives a totally different perspective, completely 100% different perspective on the screw in China and what it means. So first, you're probably asking, who is Lei Feng? Those of y'all who are keen listeners might remember Rob and I did some podcast on Lei Feng back in February 2019. That was before the world ended. We did something on Lei Feng and his dumb truck poetry. I'll put that link in the, the show page on the website, which you should check out. I will also have some translations of today's passages on that webpage. Uh, in, I think, February or March 2020, as the world was collapsing, Rob and I, Rob had just come back from China, and uh, we did a, a short podcast on the green Lei Feng. Lei Feng has kind of been reinterpreted in China. So... I still haven't said, who is Lei Feng? Lei Feng is a guy who is essentially invented by propagandists in the People's Liberation Army. Was there a real person named Lei Feng? Maybe. Did he really write a diary that praised Mao to the heavens that explained how everything that he did was un inconsequential except in as far as it contributed to the success of the Communist Party? Probably not, but that is who Lei Feng is. He was almost certainly, not 100% certain, but it, it seems fairly clear he was an invention of the propagandist. How do we know this? Because the guy seems too fake to be real, first off. Second, there are all these staged photos of him as a nobody working really, really hard. Generally, nobodies didn't have their, their pictures randomly taken just before they had this massive accident and their diary was discovered, right? Like it, the pieces just don't add up. And finally, another point, if you look at Lei Feng's diary, at the history of Lei Feng's diary, his diary is primarily the way we know Lei Feng. And if you look at the publication history, the PLA keeps republishing Lei Feng's diary. And each time they do, the PLA publishers put something completely different into the diary, depending on the ideological needs of the moment. In other words, it's all probably fiction. That said, whether or not Lei Feng is real, it really doesn't matter. He's one of the most important writers in modern China just because he's been, he and his diary have been so read in China. He's become uh, an important figure that's still resonant today. You know, PRC propagandists still use Lei Feng. Uh, my friends still occasionally mention Lei Feng when they're, when they're talking about something in China. He's very much someone who, if you're studying China, if you're studying Chinese, you should know about. Reading his diary is one of the things that everyone, and I mean everyone, had to do during the Cultural Revolution. This is what makes him such a highly influential figure. And I would argue you, you can still see hints of Lei Feng style in writers like Yu Hua and his book Brothers. Today, we're going to be looking particularly at screws and Lei Feng's attitude towards screws. Okay, here it goes. March 4th, 1962. In as far as the revolution is concerned, the role that someone plays is similar to that of a screw in a machine. It is only when the machine is held together firmly by many screws that it can be strong, that it can operate well, and that it can have a great capacity to do work. Though it is small, the screw's role is incalculable. I am ready to be a screw forever. Screws must constantly be kept in good condition. They must constantly be cleaned so that they will not rust. And so too must people's thinking be regularly checked so as not to deteriorate. Okay, 
That's the passage from March 4th, 1962 in Lei Feng's supposed diary. I think most of the folks in the world, and I'm including folks in today's China in that, I think most folks do not want to think of themselves as screws. A screw is something that holds things in place. You need it, but they don't ever get any praise. No one notices the humble screw. No one notices the humble screw. Individual glory is the thing that people today most want. Again, I think that's true in China as it is in most places in the world. That's not what Lei Feng is, is, is imagining. Lei Feng actually loves that anonymity. He's, quote, I am willing to be a screw forever. He doesn't mind being anonymous as long as he's kept clean. This passage is a part of a larger discussion that's going on in China in the 1960s and 1970s. China is trying to figure out what they want to be. China is figuring out how to be a Chinese communist state. The powers that be are saying, hey, be a screw. In English, we would probably translate this more as to, to be a cog in the machine, but essentially they're the same. They're, they are the same thing. Lei Feng imagines himself to be the screw, the cog in the machine. The part that makes everything work, the part that ties everything down, the part that gets no praise and that is largely ignored, but is essential to the running of the broader machine. Again, even when we talk about these kinds of things today, we use the machine, it tends to be in a negative way, in a pejorative way, but that is not the case in Lei Feng's China, or at least the powers that be want you to think that. Okay, so let's unpack this passage ideologically. The screw image is a part of Maoism. Maoist ideologues are trying to imagine how the individual person fits in to society. They fit in by blending in. They hold things together. They are part of the machine. In that dump truck poem podcast that Rob and I did way back in February 2019, go and check it out if you have the chance. You have Lei Feng, he sees himself becoming a part of the dump truck machine. He loses his individuality. His individuality becomes evacuated and he becomes part of this collective. There's something almost Buddhist about this whole thing. I think that's true both of the dump truck and of this image of the screw. There is this recognition that the individual does not really exist, that individuality is all an illusion. Everything in this passage is kind of geared towards, ooh, I used the word gear. Everything in this passage is geared towards losing that individuality. Here's a passage from February 27th, 1962. I should point out the translation that I'm using here is drawn from Getzler's Changing China. This is important because there are so many different editions that any edition you're likely to pick up may be completely different from another edition. February 27th. 1962. This is Lei Feng writing to himself in his diary. Lei Feng, Lei Feng, I must warn you, remember that you should never, under any circumstances, feel proud and arrogant. You must never forget that the party saved you from the tiger's mouth and has given you all you have. Anything you can do is your duty. What little you accomplish, whatever progress you make, you owe to the party. As with the passage with the screw in it, all individuality is being evacuated from Lei Feng's existence. He has no reason to feel pride. He has no reason to feel arrogance. You have to forget that stuff and remember that everything comes from the party. What you have to do is has nothing to do with your own goals. You have to try and accomplish whatever makes the party better. All individuality is being evacuated from Lei Feng's existence. Instead, he's being blended into the collective with the CCP at its head. His goal is to contribute to the party, to make the party better. Another passage from that same translation, August 20th, 1960. The People's Commune of Wanghua Fushun Municipality has been established. I supported it with 100 yuan I had saved up. When... There was a flood in Liaoyang municipality. I contributed to its people 100 yuan. I had saved by living frugally. Some people say that I am a fool, but they are wrong. I want to do worthwhile things for the people and the country. If that is foolish, I am willing to be a fool. The revolution needs such fools, and construction needs such fools. Fools. I have but one thought, and that is my whole heart is turned towards the party, towards socialism, towards communism. The revolution needs fools. Listen to that language. He's, he's uh, t- 
turning this idea that being a fool is a bad thing. He's turning that, that rhetoric upside down. He has only one thought, and that is to dedicate everything he does to the party, to socialism, to communism. What we're seeing here is part of a, a trend that I think we see globally in discussions of individuality. I frequently read half-hearted sociologists saying that China is part of this, quote, collectivist society. I just want to point something out to any sociologist who might be listening out there. When I talk to Chinese people about Leifeng, they all laugh and say, no, we would never do that. We, we don't want to be a screw. <laughs> Rob, when, when Rob and I have discussed Lei Feng, he has had similar experiences. I, I think that all of this is just to point out that Lei Feng's diary is about 50 years old this year, 50, 51, 52, depending on when you count it. There are plenty of people alive today who read uh, Lei Feng as teens when they were growing up in China who marched in the Red Guards carrying copies of Lei Feng's diary. And yet the world that they inhabit today seems totally different from the world that they inhabited in the past. The world of Lei Feng, despite what these sociologists would say, the world of China today is completely different. It's very much more individualistically oriented, I would argue, that the people who I encounter, the things that they say, this notion that it's a collectivist society strikes me as, as kind of being off point. Maybe that's just my experience. Let me know if you have any thoughts. Uh, but I, I find that that there is perhaps a rhetoric of collectivism that's stronger in China. But, but when I talk to people on a day-to-day -day level, they strike me as being just as individualistic as Americans. And I think that's, that's interesting. One of the things I think that literature does for us is it allows us to capture a particular moment in amber, just like Jurassic Park, which of course, this is a literature podcast. I have to reference a film. You can see how much the world changes in just half a century, not even the lifespan of a single average individual in China. The world that Lei Feng was a part of, at the very least, as, as Lei Feng's diary, as Lei Feng's diary presents it, it's a very different world from the world that, that my Chinese friends live in today. All of that is to say that at this time, in Lei Feng's diary, the screw symbolizes the evacuation of the individual for the collective. And that's something that I think for folks living today in China, in the U.S., in Uganda, wherever you, my listener, are at, that is something that I think it will probably be hard for, for you to really get into. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm guessing most of y'all don't want to be screws. Y'all don't want to just be nameless, unrecognized cogs in the machine. Okay. Today's podcast is drawing off something that's not my own translation, so I'm not going to put it on the website, but check out the website for other things I've translated. If you like today's show, I love getting emails letting me know. If you didn't like today's show, let me know what you thought was wrong. If you are a listener in Kunming or Kampala or Kingston, Ontario, and you're like, no, I would want my individuality to be subsumed into a national or collectivist identity. And that, I think it, all my friends want that too. Send me an email. I'd love to hear your explanation of that. Today's Cheng Yu is something I've encountered while reading about Lei Feng. Xian ren hou ji. First others, then the self. In other words, to put others before oneself. The next episode is going to be about screws, but I think it will probably resonate much more for contemporary listeners. This takes a completely different perspective from the one that Lei Feng took. Stick around in about two weeks. It'll be coming out. I am Lee Moore, and this is the Chinese Literature Podcast.